All right, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about pedal steel legs and how you can emulate them on the electric guitar. And there's a very simple formula for doing this, so we're going to break this down note for note. I have a very simple song that we're going to be playing along with that doesn't require a jam track, so we're going to use that as practice material. And I'm going to show you how to do this based on basic things you already know, basic chord shapes, the pentatonic scales. We're not getting deep into theory in this. So. I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're going to learn the first half of that song. If you'd like to learn the second half and download the tablature, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP388. So, the first thing I want to talk about, first of all, what is a pedal steel lick? Well, pedal steel is when you have one note that's being held down and then another note that's being bent. And I thought that there was some kind of a special pe uh, pedal or a B bender guitar when I would hear that in like Keith Richards stuff or the Rolling Stones or I'd hear it in, you know, Merle Haggard, whatever type of music I was listening to, I'd hear those licks and I had no idea how that was being done. And when I realized it's just electric guitar, um, you know, that opens all these possibilities. And so these pedal steel licks sound great whether you're playing country or blues or rock, you can work them into anything. And so I want you to walk away from this lesson, not just memorizing this composition, but knowing how to improvise and pull these licks out whenever you want to use them. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is a harmonized third. These are all based on harmonized thirds. Now, if you already know what a harmonized third is and you want to skip ahead to the song that we're going to learn, you can do that by going to the time on the screen right now. But a harmonized third is when you take the major scale, so we're going to be looking at a D, D major scale, and you take any of those notes in the major scale, and then you go up three intervals uh, from that note. An interval is just the space between notes. So that's an interval. That's an interval. And so a harmonized third is three intervals. So if we were to start with the first note, or the one, you'd go one, two, three. And then you play that note with the one together, and that's a harmonized third. That's all it is. So let's go from the five. One, two, three, four, five. If I were to go from the five and go up three, and remember I'm going up three intervals in that major scale, so I'd go one, two, three, you play those two together, that would be a harmonized third based off of that note. And every note in the major scale, every single one of these notes, you can harmonize by just going up three intervals from any of them. And you have, um, you have that really pretty harmonized third. The other pretty sounding harmony would be a harmonized six, but we're not going to be dealing with those in this lesson. We're only going to be talking about harmonized thirds. So one thing that I like to do, or I should just mention to you that you should know, is if you take a D or take the A chord shape. So we're going to take a D chord using the A shape, and I replace where my pinky is here with my index finger and play only strings two and three. I can play the entire D major scale using two shapes basically. I have shape one and shape two. Shape one is where both strings are uh, played in the same fret, and in this shape, there's, the two frets are staggered. So look at this. Now we're getting out of range there, but I can go this direction as well. So that's the D major scale, but I'm playing it using these harmonized thirds, where I'm harmonizing, uh, the notes are harmonizing with each other. Some of you are going, wait, wait, how did you, what are you doing there? Well, I've just memorized it, so some of this you just are going to have to memorize. But here's the first thing that, uh, if you've never done this before, one thing you got to get right away, and that is you take this chord shape, so that's your A chord shape, and then you take the same chord but played with the E shape. So that would be a D chord played up here using the E shape. And look at strings two and three. So there's out of the A shape. There's two and three out of the E shape. So now I can connect this to this. And I'm using the major scale to do that. And you can see how those two chord shapes fit together nicely. Just strings two and three. 
So everything we're gonna be learning in terms of the bending is happening on the top three strings. And actually all the bends are played on string two or three. So that's just the D major scale, but I'm walking between the two chord shapes. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, if I were to take any of these steps, let's take this one, for example, I can play a pedal steel lick based off of that harmonized third. So that's the end result. So now I have to kind of work backwards and go and figure out how I'm gonna to bend to it. And you always are bending the bottom string, the lower one. You're not bending the top. The top one you just hold down and you're bending the lower one. So we'll get into all the specifics in a minute, but that's just the basic uh, formula for what a harmonized third is. Now, once you understand that, the rest of this will make a lot more sense. So let's get into the specific lesson. So I played this in the key of D, and I played it up in this position where I was thinking about the D chord using the A shape like this. Now I came up and replaced where my pinky is with my index finger, so I'm really barring the first four strings on the seventh fret. I'm also playing with my fingers. Um, you could do this with your fingers or with a pick. So if you're a pick player and you want to use your pick, you're totally cool to do that because we're not going to really be skipping strings. Uh, this would work with e either way. But I started on the 7th fret 4th string and did a hammer on to the 9th fret 4th string, then the 7th fret 3rd string. And these notes, by the way, are in major pentatonic scale pattern 1 for D. This is important too, so look at this. So if we're looking at this chord shape, that's your A chord shape, but we're playing the D chord. Look at where that bar is. If I were to come up here with my index finger, that becomes kind of like the root fret, so I can play the major pentatonic scale pattern one right there. Hopefully you can see that. You can see major pentatonic scale pattern one and how it really butts up against this chord shape. That makes it a lot easier in the future when you want to improvise some of these harmonies to be able to find it off of a chord shape. So we're coming into this lick with Actually, I might have harmonized that and played strings two and three. That probably makes more sense. And then after that, I went to this position where I've got my middle finger on the eighth fret second string, my ring finger on the ninth fret third string, and did two half bends, but I'm doing a bend on the second string and the third string. So this is gonna be something you need to memorize. When you're thinking of this A chord shape, and you're coming into this second note in the major scale off of the, that chord shape, you can do a half bend there. And it sounds great. That's a nice pedal steel sounding lick. And I don't know where, I think I just made that one up. I don't know that I got that from anybody, but I use it a lot. It just sounds really good to me. It'd be like going, but you're bending into it. So anyway, to start, I went. So there's a bend, bend and release, and then we come down to the, um, seventh fret strings two and three. Then after that I went, great country leg. Now let's look at that. So this is major pentatonic scale pattern one to me. That's all this is. I can just see it right there, right? So I've got my ring finger on the 10th fret second string and I have my middle finger on the 9th fret 3rd string. And while I hold this note, I'm going to bend the 9th fret 3rd string doing a full bend. And so that's a hard thing to do when you're just learning how to do it because what your uh, tendency is going to be is to bend both. But you've got to hold one down and try and bend it. And this really is a great exercise for getting bends down and using your ear and trying to really lock in on those, those harmonies. But once you have that, even if you get nothing else out of this lesson, this lick is super useful as a country or a blues lick that you can work in based off of this chord shape or based off of your your pentatonic scale, major, major pentatonic scale pattern one, however you want to think about it. Um, okay, and when I'm bending into that, let's look at what's going on. This note is bending up to here. So I'm bending into this. This would be the D chord using the E shape that I just talked about. So when I played that, I was bending up into that position. 
All right, so from the beginning we have. And then there's the bend. Now we're gonna release. Back down to the seventh fret, strings two and three. Okay, now after that, the song goes to the G chord. So we're going from the one to the four chord. So I was thinking of where are my G's? I have a G there, I have a G up here. Oh yeah, I'll just play it right there since I was already in position. And that's what I played. That would be like playing the C chord shape out of Cage, but we don't need the whole thing. We just need this piece of it. So you just bar that first four strings on the seventh fret, middle finger goes down on the eighth fret, second string, ring finger on the ninth fret, four string. And we're playing strings four, three, and two. That's how I played it. Actually, and then I came up and hit the one string. So that's another way to play a G chord, obviously, that um, is using the, the cage system. Now after that I went... It was a little sharp there. Now what I'm doing for that is I'm still thinking major pentatonic scale pattern one. Right? So now I'm doing my bend on the 10th fret 2nd string while I hold down the 10th fret 1st string with my pinky. So what you're going to notice is you've got, in this major pentatonic scale, you've got a bend here, you've got a bend here. And those are your two country bands that you can use. You've got this one or this one. So we've got that bend and release. And then we're going to go back down to the, the, the one we did before, which is a ring finger on the 10th fret 2nd string, middle finger on the 9th fret 3rd string. So we've got... Alright, so let's back it up from the beginning. We have... Here's the G. So now we have that bend, and then, so there, to get out of it, there's your bend, you hold it while you put your pinky down on the 10th fret first string. Let's play one, two, and then three. So you got really country. And you can see all that is happening in the major pentatonic scale pattern one. So once you can see that, you can see that major pentatonic scale pattern one. And you can connect that major pentatonic scale pattern one back to your, either this shape or this shape, how, you know, it's between those two. However you can think about it, you can come at this lick anytime you want it. All right, so after that classic country lick, then I went, that same little half bend like we did at the beginning there, where you've got your eighth fr uh, middle finger on the 8th fret 2nd string, ring finger on the ninth fret 3rd string. Half bend, bending both of them. Down to the 7th fret uh, strings 2 and 3. And then I landed there. And that's where the song switch it would be switching to the A chord. And what you're really playing is like an A7. You're just playing these two notes out of it. Or that's what I'm thinking of. I'm not actually playing an A7. But I'm imagine that. So um, you have, let's take it from the beginning to that point. Okay, and then the one other lick I'm going to work into this video goes like this. So look at this. Now this is where I've got my pinky on the 9th fret 1st string and my middle finger is on the 8th fret 2nd string. And this is a hard lick to do uh, if you're new to bending anyway. This one will, is a little tough on your fingers, but you can do it. Hold down that 9th uh, fret 1st string and then I use my uh, middle finger. Some of you may want to use a different finger. I don't know. I find the middle finger with my index finger behind it helping push. Doing a full bend there. So it goes. And what is that? That's that A7. Remember, we're playing over the A now. So if you can picture starting 
at that A7 chord up here. This would be, if you think of your D7 chord shape, you know, if you're playing a D7 in first position, playing it up here would be an A7. So if I were playing just those top two strings out of that and using that as my starting point, and then bending up to the A major chord, right? So you're going like that. And then I came down to overshot it there. So that's just trying to play, you know, right out of the A triad there. I'm just playing strings two and three though. So I'm holding that note down, the fifth fret, second string, while I bend the fourth fret, third string, doing a full bend. That's a hard one to do too. So you have, So all of that represents the A part. Now I'm going to actually end this part one video there. We've covered a lot of information. Um, and remember, as a premium member, you would have access to the second half and the tablature uh, and be able to go over everything you know, with the on-screen tab viewer. You can slow it down and all of that. So there's a lot of value in that. If you're interested in this, and obviously you'd have access to the entire back catalog of over almost nearly 10 years worth of lessons now. All right, let me back up and play through this first half one more time, and then we'll see in part two where we'll go over the rest. One, two, three.